Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Saurav, and this is my YouTube channel, Data Science Nowhere. So, if you are new to this channel, please do like and subscribe. Your efforts are massively appreciated. So, this is a part of lecture series on data pre-processing technique, and here we are learning how to pre-process the data for machine learning algorithms. As of now, we are learning techniques for missing values imputation, and today we have another technique that is 3M or mean median mode technique. I have already talked about this technique in my previous video and in this video we are going to do a python implementation on an actual data. I have already prepared the notebook and I will explain you each line of code. So now let's jump to the Jupyter notebook and the link for this notebook is in the description box and don't forget to follow me on github. I have some amazing repository there so feel free to check them out. So here I have imported all the libraries. We don't have to import any new library for the imputation because we are going to create our own function for this. Next, we are loading the data set into the Jupyter notebook and again, link for this data set is in the description box. In the next block of code, we are running through each variable of the data set and we are using two conditions to filter out the data. The first one is whether the data is numeric or not. So this pd.api.isNumeric is doing that thing. It is basically give us boolean value. Then we are checking another condition that is the sum of missing value is greater than zero or not. And if a variable passes these two conditions, then we are going to append this variable into a new list. So in nutshell, this block of code is helping us find out those continuous variables which have missing value in them. And you are going to see this kind of code a lot in upcoming videos. So now let's check how many variables satisfy this condition. So here we have three such variables and I'm going to show you the 3M technique on the first one. And you have to apply this technique on the other variables. Now the next important thing that we have to do and I've seen many people applying this technique before splitting the data. Which is wrong because in a way this is a data leakage problem. So whenever we have to impute values, we have to do it on the training data or we have to split the data before applying any kind of data cleaning technique, whether you are doing outlier detection or anything. Just make sure that you are splitting the data before. And here we are using train test split method that you have seen many times. So first we have to pass the X variable, then we have to pass the Y variable, which is our target. Then we have to pass the test size. In this case, it is 0.3. That is 30% of the data is for testing. And then to reproducibility purpose, we are setting the random state equals to 0. And you can pass any value. It's not mandatory to pass 0. You can pass 1, 2, 3, whatever you want to pass. Next, we are going to see the distribution of the data. Because as we talked in theory part, that we have to use mean in case of normal distribution and median in case of skewed distribution. So for that, we have to see the distribution or basically we have to plot a histogram. So first we are setting figure size, that is how much is the figure. And then we are setting the style for the graph. In this case, it is going to be white grid. Next, we are using subplot functionality and it allows us to plot the distribution side by side. So we are going to plot the distribution for all the three variables side by side. Next, we are using hist from the matplot library. Then we have to pass few things like first we are passing the variable. Next we are passing the number of edges, sorry, number of bins. And then we are passing edge color and the color for the histogram. And then we are just labeling the graph and setting the title and all that thing. And the same thing we are doing for the next two variables. And notice that the number in the subplot has changed. Earlier it was 131 and now it is 132. Which indicate that this is going to be the second graph. And rest of the things are very similar to what we done for the first variable. We are just changing the name. So now let's plot the graphs. And here you can see the three graphs. And from this graph we can observe that the first variable is almost normally distributed. And obviously in real world we do not get a normally distributed variable which I have already talked in previous video. And the second variable is right skewed. And the third variable is left skewed. So we will see the implementation for the frontage variable that is normally distributed and we will try to impute all the three statistics and try to compare them side by side. Now in the next block of code we have created a function by the name impute which is going to implement the three techniques. 
So this function takes three things. First, we have to pass the data. Next, we have to pass the variable name. And finally, we have to pass the strategy. That is, which statistics we want to use for imputation. Now, talking about this function, what it does. So first, we are checking the condition. So if the strategy is mode, that is, if you want to impute mode on the place of missing values, it will execute this block of code. So first, we are calculating the mode of the variable. Next, we are creating a variable with a strategy name as a suffix. And then we are imputing the mode in place of missing values. So here you can see that we have not changed the original variable. And the reason being, we need to make comparison between the original variable and the variable with imputed values. And the same code is repeated for other strategies as well. So that's all our function is doing. In the next block of code, we have created another function and it takes three things. First, we have to pass the data. Next, we have to pass a variable and then we have to pass another variable. So why we have created this function and the reason being we want to compare that how the variable distribution changes when it is not imputed and when it is imputed. You can read this code. It is very similar to the previous one. I would suggest you to go through it once. It will get you better understanding what we are doing. In the next block of code, we are applying these two functions that we have created. So first we are applying impute function on frontage variable and we are using mean strategy here. Next, we are just calling our plotter function and then we are plotting these two variables that the variable before imputation and the variable after imputation. So let's run this cell and see the side by side comparison of these two distributions. So here we can see two distributions. The blue one is for the variable which has missing values and the orange one is for the variable which has no missing values or those values has been imputed using mean. And here we can see that it is somewhat following a normal distribution, although it's not perfect. Next thing you will notice that there is a height difference. That is the height of orange one is greater than the blue one. This is because it has been imputed with average values. Hence the frequency of average values has increased, which is reflected as an increase in the height of the graph. And we can see that this orange graph is completely overlapping the blue one if we ignore the height part, which is an indicator that we can use mean as an imputation. In the next block of code, we are doing the same thing. Here we are just changing the strategy and the strategy we are using is mode. So let's plot this. And now here you can see the graph, which is looking similar to the previous one. And the similarity is due to the fact that mean median mode is equal in normal distribution. But in our case, it is going to be slightly different because our variable is not perfectly normally distributed. Next, again, we are doing the same thing, but this time we are using median as a strategy. And here you will notice that this graph looks very similar to mean imputation. So in a way, we can assume that median and mean are very close to each other and that is not the case with mood. It is slightly different from mean and median. Next, we have created a new function that will plot all the variables, that is actual variable and the imputed variable together. And this will allow us to actually understand that which one is better for our purpose. So this function is very similar to the previous one. We are just adding new variables in this function. And we can see that it is taking the data and then there are four variables and these four variables are plotted here. So this is quite a repetitive function and you will see it a lot in our upcoming videos as well. So now let's use this function and plot all these variables. So here we are getting much more clear picture. We can see that mode is slightly misaligned, but in case of mean and median, we can see that they are almost similar. So for this particular variable, we can either go for mean or we can go for median. So this way we can visualize all these imputations side by side and compare that which one is better. But one thing that we have to check again is that data summary. That's how the variables are changing, how the statistical properties are changing. So for that, first we are going to create a list of all those variables for which we are going to get the summary. And in our case, we have these four variables. So I have saved them into a new list. And next we are going to run this code. So dot describe method will give us all the statistical properties. 
So the first thing that we observe is the count that the count has increased and this is obvious because we are not dropping the observation we are imputing them. Next we see the mean of the variable in case of median imputation and we see here that the mean is slightly different from the original variable because obviously here we are using median so we can expect that there should be a slight change. But in case of mode imputation we see that now the average is 67. It was earlier 69 so there is a drop, a significant one which is a sign that we should not use mode. And then we have a standard deviation which in case of mean is dropping. That is because by introducing mean we are increasing the number of observation but we are not adding any kind of variation in the data. So like this you can do all sorts of checks before imputing and after imputing the variable. So this will help us understand that whether we should use this technique or not. So that's all for this technique. If you have any doubt, please let me know in the comment section. And if you are new to this channel, please do like and subscribe and press the bell icon for the future updates. Till then, bye, stay safe and wear a mask.